Hey, welcome to Pusher. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to eliminate this mess of hoses that's usually left behind when you do a race or off-road conversion to an 07 Ram like the one behind me with a 6.7 Cummins. Leaving this stuff intact can definitely create a lot of issues down the road. And so we've developed what we call a coolant reroute to eliminate all those. And so for your specific install, you're definitely gonna to wanna to refer to the instructions that ship with every single reroute. These are gonna cover all your generational nuances that are different between each generation truck when you do the install. In this video, I'm gonna cover the main key steps, give you a couple different angles of view, a little extra information, whatever I can to hopefully make your job go faster. So let's get this hood pop and get to it. So here's everything I was just holding in my hand, still installed in the truck, obviously. So on on-road, emissions on trucks, the EGR cooler is normally right here, and all this stuff secures to the EGR cooler. Because this customer took the steps to make this an off-road race vehicle, he's removed the EGR cooler and used a bracket like this to try and still secure everything, but it's nowhere near as rigid and allows everything to vibrate pretty bad the entire time the motor's running. And what that eventually leads to is this flex joint here leaking, leaking cooling everywhere. And so not only that, this doesn't look very good, it's totally in the way for like a second gen turbo swap, which puts the turbo here, or like our high mount compound system, which puts another charger here. And so we're gonna eliminate all those problems with our coolant reroute. I'm gonna go ahead and start disassembly now. I'm gonna breeze through the simple stuff pretty fast, and then we're gonna get into the most detail when we go to prep our coolant tube and install our coolant adapter. So now that I have all this out of the truck, I'm gonna start prepping my coolant riser tube for the adapter. And so you'll notice this thing's still relatively assembled because I've done this a lot. And I did basically the bare minimum disassembly I had to do to get it out of the truck. Because ultimately I'm gonna cut this here and all this is gonna get replaced with new components. And so if you find it easier to remove this hose and then this hose and then this hose and the bracket, that's fine. But I, I don't personally need to do that. So prepping for the adapter, we are basically gonna cut this tube roughly right here. Again, you need to refer to your instructions for the exact place to cut because this tube varies by every generation Ram truck. And so this is a 16 model year. This boss is where your coolant returns from the factory charger. And so since it's a race vehicle, he's already upgraded to a bigger fixed geometry turbo. He doesn't need that. I'm gonna keep this in case he ever does go back to a VGT charger. If you have a VGT charger, you need to keep this boss as well. So I'm gonna basically cut this bend of the pipe off. And so as far as cutting tools go, you do not wanna use one of these guys. They do create a really nice clean cut, but as you rotate them around, they actually will reduce the diameter of the tube, therefore the interface with our O-ring. So do not use these. You can use a cutoff wheel, a bandsaw, a sawzall, whatever you're really comfortable with creating a nice square clean cut with is fine. Employing the measure twice, cut once technique is definitely good here. Um, we have a vertical bandsaw here that I really like, so I'm gonna cut this with that. So now I have a nice square cut on my tube. I did some light deburring just so I don't cut myself. Um, and also I've gone through and cleaned up any crud that could be on the inside, depending on how old the truck is, how often the coolant was changed, you could have some stuff in there. So I used a small diameter flap wheel to just go in and lightly clean that up, which is really convenient. And then I went ahead and confirmed that my adapter does slide into the tube. So there's no crud or anything like that that's gonna stop me from doing that. So now I need to mark the hole that the bolt's gonna go into to retain this adapter in the tube. And so for this model truck, our hole is going to be located a quarter of an inch from the cut edge down below it. The clocking of where you drill the hole doesn't really matter, but I prefer to have that hole pointing out away from the motor. So I know this boss basically points straight back. And so if I put my hole somewhere here, then I'll be able to access that later if I ever need to with it still installed in the truck. So a really accurate way to mark that quarter inch is to take a set of calipers, set them to a quarter inch, tighten your little thumb screw here, and then you can take your jaws and let one jaw ride on the edge of the cut on the tube and the other one, the point on it, make it scribe a line on your tube. 
and then you know that's exactly a quarter inch on center. So the whole diameter for this model truck is ultimately gonna be a 3 16 hole. It's a little bit big, in my opinion, for the first um, size to drill. So I'm gonna start with a 3 30 seconds, and I'm gonna get that guy right on the center of my line, make sure I am there, and then just gently drill my pilot hole. Now we're gonna step up to our 3 16 drill bit. So now comes what I feel is the most important part of this entire install, and that is deburring your cut and your inside of your hole that you just drilled. It's very, very important that you don't have any sharp edges there that are gonna catch and cut your O-ring. Also, the way an O-ring seals in this particular application is your O-ring is actually larger than the ID of the tube. So when you insert it, it gets compressed and pressed against the inside of the tube and therefore creates a seal. And so it's really important to have a chamfer or an edge break or you know, a more common terminology would be like a funnel shape on the end of the tube to help kind of grab and guide that O-ring in and compress it as it slides into the tube. So there's a lot of ways you can do that. You can use the flap wheel we talked about earlier and go in and kind of like go around the outside with it. A tool we use a lot here uh, and just is one of these swivel deburr tools which is really convenient because it makes a really nice surface finish and it's very controlled and you can kind of see exactly what's going on and go around and around the tube. So I prefer to use this for this edge because it's just what I've become accustomed to and what I'm you know, really handy with. So I'm gonna do all my deburring now and get my tube ready to put in our adapter. So now I'm ready to insert my coolant adapter. I've gone ahead and put some silicone grease on the inside of the tube and my O-ring. This is not silicone sealant. The O-ring is what's doing the sealing. This is just some grease to help everything slide together easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this in here. I'm gonna pre-align my two holes. And I'm not gonna like do this number. I wanna just go nice straight in, make sure that my O-ring is not getting squeezed out of the groove. And it goes in. And then I wanna stop right there. I don't wanna shove the O-ring that's sticking out of the hole past there. I'm going to take an Allen wrench or something blunt that's very similar in size to the hole. I'm going to push that O-ring back in the hole so that it doesn't get cut in the, by the hole on the way by. And just push my adapter the rest of the way in. And you can you know, make small adjustments, get your hole lined up, and then we can go ahead and set our screw in. So I have a, our little M4 button head bolt here that's going to secure our coolant adapter. Its only job is to keep the adapter from getting shoved out of the tube by coolant pressure. So it's really effectively a pin. So we need to put a little Loctite on it because we're not gonna like tighten this thing down. It's not like securing the coolant adapter to the side of the tube, it's just keeping it from sliding out. So. so just need to put enough torque on it to activate the Loctite. That's it. Now we're ready to set this back in the truck and get to reassembling everything else. Okay, so now that we have our coolant Roger tube reinstalled with the factory bolt, we're ready to finish off this install and kind of tidy everything else up. The first thing to do is to plug off where our coolant used to come through and go to our EGR cooler. So we're gonna put in the plug that we supply in the kit in this hole. We wanna put a little Teflon paste on there to help lubricate the plug and seal it. As it is pipe plug, or pipe thread I should say. And this is a steel plug going into a cast iron head, so don't be afraid to get it good and tight. Next up, we need to secure our transmission dipstick tube here. We're gonna do that by utilizing this threaded M8 boss here on the side of the cylinder head and this polished stainless bracket here. So we're just gonna take the M8 bolt supplied in the kit. And we're just gonna loosely install this for now because it's also going to help support the hose we're gonna install next. 
So let's put this bolt in. Fairly loose, just snug it. Just so it kind of stays there, but we can still adjust it like that. Now we can install the hose going from the heater core to the coolant riser. I have my hose clamps just slid in there, and then I also have my P-clamp pre-positioned as well. So I can go ahead and just slide the short end on my coolant adapter, and then line up the other end with my heater core. So I can work with my hose clamps later. Right now I wanna go ahead and get my um, transmission dipstick tube and P-clamp all lined up. So lastly, we need to secure our dry pressure sensor. And so I've already broke loose this little ferrule nut here so that I can just kind of rotate it out of the way and that'll allow me to position it easier later. We need to remove this nut here. And then our dry pressure sensor bracket is gonna go behind that nut. This bracket actually relocates the sensor about three quarters of an inch closer to the valve cover, which just gives us a little bit more room for different turbo options. So we're gonna rotate this guy up. You can see there's about a three quarter inch gap there. And so we're just gonna push this over to it. I wanna get my bolt and nut in there first. That way it can't get misaligned while I'm working with it. Got yeah, that pretty close. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the lower hardware and then I'll work on the upper after. All right, so I've wrapped up everything that comes in the coolant reroute kit. It's all installed and tightened. So now obviously all I have to do is reinstall the customer's cold air intake, obviously refill the system with coolant. And then this customer opted to run our optional CCV filter, which is gonna go here and just clean things up even further. And so once that's all done, I can fire the engine and continue to burp the system, you should be able to put all the coolant you drained back in the system. All right, I'm finished. I've gone over all my hardware and connections again, just to be super safe that I've done my job correctly. I have all my coolant back in the system. If you have any left, you probably have just a little bit of air trapped underneath your thermostat. And the first time the thing cycles, is gonna push the air through and it'll return from this hose to the tank. These trucks are really good at that. So you'll be able to add whatever little bit you do have left if you do. Um, and then as you can see, I have a ton of space here now for a different turbo configuration. I've eliminated all my vibration problems and potential cool links that come with that. And then overall, if this is the way the truck just stays, it's a much cleaner, tidier looking engine bay than what it was before. And so if you still have questions after doing this install or you're in the middle of it and this video in your instructions don't address those, we're here for you. Shoot us an email, give us a call, and thanks for watching.